Hey everyone and welcome to another wonderful, spectacular, and absolutely amazing. We'll just keep saying that until it comes true, right? <laughs> uh, episode of Learn to Play Piano with Charlie. Um, the series where basically it's like piano lessons or a master class or whatever you want to do and I'll I cover a whole bunch of topics from improvising to whatever. So today we're going to be doing something uh, that applies to all kinds of music, whether you're playing a Disney song or a piece by Beethoven. And it's a skill that's really, really important to learn. We're trying out a couple new um, camera angles. We've got an angle over there so you can see me. And we've got an angle up here so you can hopefully see my hand. So let me know what you think of these angles. Hopefully my head isn't blocking too much. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go. So today, before we start, we are going to ask you, we are going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to please hit the subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment and, uh, and share this. And if you haven't already, there's a little bell. This is my little impression of a bell. It's like, I don't know, it was like a little bell. If you hit that, it'll let you know when I post new videos. So thank you so much. And if you're not watching on YouTube, head on over to YouTube and uh, check it out. So subscribe and help the channel because it really helps out the algorithm. And if the algorithm likes you, then the video goes out more and we can spread the music more. So anyways, today we are going to talk about playing legato. And I'm going to take this as kind of a beginner's kind of thing of what is legato, why do you need it, and... Um, and how do you do it? And we'll, we'll kind of cover some of the basics of, of how to play legato. So, legato. What is legato? L-E-G... I gotta think, think about it. L-A-G... I can't even talk today. L-E-G-A-T-O. Legato. There we go. I'll put it on the screen. Bam! Legato. All right. Legato means playing smooth and connectedly. So, uh, it's kind of the opposite of staccato, which is like disconnected. Legato is when you play... So it all sounds like it's, it's connected and together. Um, and it's a very important thing because if you're playing a piece and you're not playing legato when you're supposed to be, it's going to sound bad. Um, if someone were to sing, and I can't sing, you all know I can't sing, but if I could sing, I'm going to try, so don't shut off the video yet, you know, um, no, actually I'm not going to sing because that would probably be a bad idea. If a singer was singing and they're like, they cut off every word after each word, it wouldn't sound very lyrical. And so legato helps it sound lyric and nice. So how do you play legato on a piano? Well, um, some people, their solution is to slap down the, the sostenuto, the, the pedal, the right pedal on the piano and just play. The problem with that is that it just sounds like a mess. It sounds blurry because it, it just doesn't sound very good. Um, and oftentimes you don't want, if you're playing other things with it, it just sounds like a mess. So you can't really rely only on the pedal. So um, <clears throat> there's something I call finger legato, and I think a lot of people use that term, finger legato, where basically you're connecting, you're playing legato, but only using your fingers. So, at its most basic, basically, all you gotta do is uh, basically connect them. So, before you play the second, uh, don't let go of the previous note before you play the next note. So if you let go of the previous note first, it'll be disconnected. So there's gonna be a little bit of overlap between each note. So you're gonna play like the C, for example, if you're playing a C scale, and then you're gonna play D, and immediately let go of the, uh, of the original C note and then, and so forth. Down, up, down, lift, down, lift, down, lift. So if you, if you don't lift fast enough, then it can still sound a little bit like kind of blurry. That's not so legato. I mean, it's kind of technically maybe, but it sounds bad, right? So you have to kind of time it so that you're pushing, you play one note, you play the other note and you lift, you play the other note and then you lift and so on and so forth. So you're basically having a little bit of overlap, but not too much. Right? So now there's other ways that you can make the legato sound better. So add, that's kind of legato at its most basic, but how can we make it sound even better? Well, um, this is going to be kind of getting into other topics. We won't go into too much, but if you shape the melody, it can also help create the sense of a lyric, um, cohesive motion and, and also make your legato sound better. So for example, if I'm just playing just flat, I mean, it sounds legato, but if you shape it, 
shaping meaning you're kind of changing uh, how loud each note is. Maybe you're getting louder, maybe getting softer, maybe getting louder and then softer, or then softer and then louder, whatever. It can also help kind of, it, it's almost like a mental trick, like an auditory trick. I also, if you notice, kind of slowed down at the end there. Now, it's not necessarily the slow, that you slow down or anything like that, I'm not saying that, but it can also kind of all kind of tie into making it sound like one idea instead of like eight different notes. It's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's one phrase, right? Um, so that's kind of getting into phrasing and stuff, so we won't go into too much of that. But again, as a review, legato, Basically, you're playing one note, you're playing the next note, and then lifting the first note, then playing the next note, and then lifting the first note. So you have a little split second there where you're playing two notes at the same time. Now this ties in closely to the F word. Uh, and it's not the four letter F word that you're all thinking about right now, get your mind out of the gutters there, but it is, uh, it's definitely talking about the what I call the F word in music, and that's fingering. Now fingering is something that pretty much, well, I, I, there's probably some weird people out there who like uh, fingering in, in piano music. I, I don't. And most people probably don't. Most students don't. Uh, you talk about fingering, it's just like brr, boring, right? Like, who cares what fingering you push? I'm of the opinion on fingering that if it doesn't affect how it sounds and it doesn't like, uh, if, it, if it doesn't affect the music, right? Like, it doesn't make it, the music sound bad and it doesn't um, hurt you in any way, like make you tight or, or, or in pain or anything like that, like your hands, wrists, arms, things like that then it doesn't matter what fingering you use. But if, it, if it's hampering your ability to play as good as you can, right? Like if, if, if it's hampering the music in any way, if you can play the music better with a different fingering, then you should probably do the, the other fingering. Or, or and or, um, that is, if, you, uh, if you're hurting or in pain or tightening up because of bad fingering, that's also a, something, that's a big sign that you need to like change your fingering and also probably like learn how to relax and stuff. That might be a topic for another video. Um, you should always stay relaxed. Disclaimer, maybe I'll flash a thing now. Disclaimer, if, if you're ever playing, this is a side note, if you're ever playing and then your hands, fingers, wrists, arms, any of that starts feeling like tight, um, in pain, whatever, stop, stop, and, um, and, uh, uh, and figure out how to fix it. And oftentimes that's gonna involve relaxing as much as you can, keeping loosey-goosey, things like that. This might be an, a, a topic for another, um, for another uh, episode, but, uh, if you're if you're in pain, if you're tightened up and stuff like that, um, stop and fix the problem. Address the problem. Don't just plow through it because you could cause like uh, damage to your hands and arms and wrists and fingers and all that kind of stuff. And you, and you don't want that because some of it could be like permanent damage. So, yeah. Um, anyway, back to the back to the topic. Fingering. If you're playing with bad fingering, if I was playing those same notes with just my two finger. It's not legato. It's it's pretty much impossible to play it legato. I guess you could kind of. I mean, you can't really. It's basically impossible. Um, you can kind of make it seem like it's legato using some of those other tricks. It kind of makes it seem like it's still one idea, but it's still detached. So your fingering does matter. So you know, being able to if you're if you're running out of fingers, right? Let's say I'm playing with. I start with three, four, five. I guess I could cross over, but like if I run out of fingers and have to jump. No matter how well you play, if your fingering is, if it sucks, then you're not gonna be able to play legato properly. So uh, fingering can also play highly into legato. So if you're running out of fingers, um, that might be a sign that you might need new fingering. Okay. So anyway, as a recap, legato is, is, is very important and no matter what kind of music you're playing, whether it's... Beethoven, or it's um, you know you know any whatever uh, that might be, um, it's important. So uh, you're gonna have to to learn how to do fingering uh, properly in order to do legato, and um, and you're gonna have to learn how to do legato because legato in general is pretty important in music. So again, your overlapping notes. And they don't have to be notes that are next to each other. You can do legato that's stretched apart. And again, same general concept. You're not letting go of the former note until after your new note is pressed. If I do it um, and let go and let go before I play the next note, it will always sound disconnected. 
um, unless you have the pedal down. Now your pedal, let's get into the pedal idea. We talked a little bit about how you can't rely on it solely for legato, but it can help. So that's uh, legato without pedal. With a little bit of pedal. And it's important to keep pedal clear because you don't want it to be It sound like a mess. It just sounds like it's underwater and it's just, right? So you can add a little pedal and uh, you can use like flutter pedal uh, to, to kind of help keep your pedal clear but still maintain pedal. Sorry. Right? Um, I used a little bit of it there. Uh, we can talk about that maybe in another video. Flutter pedal basically is when you um, are changing the pedal, uh, maybe not even coming up all the way. So you're kind of like, I don't, I take back, I take back what I said. It's not maybe, it's when you're fluttering the pedal, like kind of like your foot is going like this on the pedal and um, it's not really coming all the way off. You're just kind of clearing it, kind of letting it air out by letting go a little bit, but maybe not, but not, I keep saying maybe, but not all the way. Okay, so anyway, that is the basics of legato. Legato is super important, no matter what kind of music you're playing. And um, it's something that can be really hard. Another quick tidbit, and this kind of goes into like shaping and phrasing and things like that. A pulling on the notes can also make a difference. So um, if you're playing legato and you just kind of play it flat, it's okay, but you can, you can pull on it. And that helps with the shaping. And by pulling, I mean physically kind of pulling out from the key. So pulling the keys back. help get a rich tone and help shape it. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can think of that stands out blatantly for, for shaping, or for, for legato. Not that I can, I mean, the, the, the keyest, the, the keyest, the keyest, I'm, I'm gonna just make up words in this series, that's fine. Uh, the most important thing is though, uh, you're basically is that overlap of notes and you don't wanna overdo it, but you wanna, uh, you wanna, you still wanna do it. Um, the pulling on the notes thing, going back to that, uh, before I let you go, is you can pull on notes, it's easier to do it uh, when you're playing slowly, more slowly, you can still do it when you're doing fast, but um, it's more obvious, it's, it's more obvious to do when you're um, playing very slowly. Actually pulling back on the notes, and this is again kind of going into shaping, but it all kind of ends up tying together. Um, anyway, I hope that was helpful. I kind of rambled on about it a little bit at the end, but I kept coming back to the main point and that's releasing the note prior after you play the next note. And that's basically the basics of legato and it's pretty important in all types of music. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And um, if you have any questions on like techniques or certain things that you want me to maybe make a video on someday, uh, let me know too. Um, I appreciate the feedback and thanks for subscribing and smashing the like button and the notification bell and all that stuff and sharing and all that great stuff. So thank you all. I will see you guys later on another episode of learning to play piano with Charlie. So see you later.